So today we have apa ni? 9.53 of you joining the class. Okay. So yang lain tu missing ke, banji ke, uh, saya tak pasti. Okay. Alright. So for this week onwards, okay, I'll be in charge in the mass lecture. Okay, for this subject. Okay, and uh, there will be about two more chapters to go, which is uh, energy and utilities balance, manpower needs. Okay, and then the last one is your uh, costing. Okay, all right. So, what you're going to learn today is the objective is so simple, is for you to make sure that um, you know how to apply, okay, uh, energy utilities balance in your plant design, okay. So if you were to choose your, um, if you were to choose your equipment, okay, your unit operation or your major equipment, and your major equipment need to have cooler or heater or a reboiler, okay? So you might want to uh, apply energy balance, okay? To make sure that instead of using heater alone, you can have a recycle of energy, okay? To make sure that you can reduce the cost, okay? For your particular plant, all right? So in that way, okay? You, you are not going to waste any hot water that you produce, okay, in the system or any steam that you have used in the system or in your plant, okay. So, you just recycle the heat energy so that heat, that particular heat energy can contribute to the energy provided for another equipment, okay. So, I would like to see that in your uh, simulation using Aspen Plus, okay? Even though your plan or your PFD of your plan or your PFD for your particular major equipment doesn't show that you are using heat exchanger, but if you are able to uh, recycle, reuse the energy that normally uh, you're going to waste that particular energy in your simulation, uh, that will improve your marks in your simulation using Aspen later. Okay. All right. So let me share with you the screen. Okay. So this is about only a revision theory so that you can apply in your plant design. Okay. So I'm going to share the screen. So there are about four topics, four subtopics in this chapter regarding to the energy and utility balances. Okay. Uh, the first one is the conservation of energy. The second is the sizing energy equipment and the utility manpower requirement. And the last subtopic for this chapter will be the pinch technology. Okay. So the pinch technology is the part where you're going to apply in your uh, major equipment using uh, uh, Aspen simulation. Okay. All right. So let's look at this particular, okay, particular heat exchanger. Okay. So you have to look to your major equipment because uh, each of you in charge of your major equipment okay whether you are required to have a process stream at high pressure or high temperature so look at your uh, pfd okay pfd of your system whether you need to have uh, to use high temperature or high pressure okay and then if it's involved uh, reaction, okay, look for the, uh, the the unit that's need to be heated, okay, need to be heated, okay, so that you can recognize 
how you can uh, recover the energy that you have used. Okay. So next one is about the economics. So the purpose is to make sure that you you can reduce the cost that you produce uh, in this in the plant. Okay. So this is the most expensive cost that will be incurred in your uh, plant. Okay. The energy is the expensive uh, cost to be recovered. Okay, if you can recover the energy, then you can uh, save uh, the cost. Okay. All right. So these are the approach. Okay, approach in chemical plant operation. Okay, when you talk about conservation of energy, look for the heat exchanger network that you are using, and then waste heat. Uh, Boiler, okay. Is there any high temperature reactors that you're using? Okay, or can you use the low grade fuels? All right, and then whether you are using high pressure process stream. Okay, so these are the things that you have to look through in your plan. Okay, and then try to manipulate the diagram, the PFD that you have. If you were to change that into uh, 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 what a network that involve uh, heat exchange, okay, or involve heat uh, heat exchanger unit, okay, All right. So avoid uh, to use just a cooler, for example, just a cooler to just uh, just to absorb the heat energy that you produce to cool the liquid or whatsoever. Instead of using cooler, try to apply heat exchanger in your system. Okay. All right. So this is uh, how it looks like. Okay. You have learned about heat exchanger, I think, in part, part four. Uh, yeah, I think. You learn about heat, eh? uh, heat transfer. Okay. So there are many types of heat exchanger that you can apply, right? So it doesn't matter what type of heat exchanger that you're going to apply in your plant design, okay? As long as you understand that there will be transfer of energy involved, okay? If there is a transfer of energy involved, okay, it's better for you to use heat exchanger instead of having condenser or cooler, okay? or just a cooler, okay? So uh, this is the diagram where you can look through, okay? Where you supply for the heat exchanger, there are two ways of having heat exchanger, whether to cool down the liquid or the fluid or to heat up the fluid, okay? As long as it meets the requirement of the um, heating system or cooling system, then you can apply the heat exchanger, okay? So we here are to test you whether you can apply back what you have learned in your heat transfer subject in this particular uh, course, okay? Okay, same thing for the heater, all right? For the heater, maybe you can heat the equipment, uh, heat the liquid uh, or the, you can heat the uh, preheat, for example, eh? Preheating the preheating the fluid that you're dealing with, okay, before you really heat the fluid. Instead of having a fresh feed and you heat the feed at high temperature, okay, it's better to have uh, the fluid or the feed that you preheat first, using the energy that you can conserve from the uh, from the other streams, okay, and then reheat the fluid so that will cost will reduce the cost involved in the production okay because the amount of energy needed can be conserved okay okay so this is how the waste heat boiler looks like okay All right so for high temperature reactor okay for most of you who are dealing with the exotomic uh, exothermic reaction, so you're going to need this particular information, okay? Try to recover your heat energy, okay? 
So if the reaction is highly exothermic, cooling will be needed. And if the reactor temperature is high enough, the heat remove can be used to generate steam. Okay. So if you can generate the steam and use the generated steam to reheat the feed again, then you can save the cost. Okay. So all about costing actually, all about reducing the cost. It doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean that when you can make profit, uh, it doesn't mean that if you can make revenue, okay, make revenue, you can sell products. It means that you have the profit. It doesn't mean that way, okay? All right. So you have to broaden your mind, broaden your knowledge, okay? It doesn't mean that if you can sell so many products and at the same time you gain more profit. It doesn't mean that way, okay? Because there is cost involved, okay? Cost involved in the production, okay? There are costs involved in marketing, for example, all right? So in your case, cost is involved in the production, all right? So majority of the costs involved the utilities part, okay? Especially the energy part, okay? So, in order for you to make profit for your plan, you have to make sure that you can minimize the cost of production. Minimize the cost of production means that whatever cost that's involved in order to produce your product should be reduced. Okay, you try your best to minimize it. If you can minimize the cost, then you can see uh, your plan will get more profit so that it can grow. Okay, so you can it can grow bigger. You can extend the plan. You can uh, expand the product, the production. Okay, so that is the thing that you have to think when you are designing. Okay, when you are designing. Same thing, so you have to think like you are a businessman, okay? So think about a businessman. In order to, for you to get higher profit, you have to control your cost, okay? Other than increasing your production or selling your products, okay? Increase the sales of your product, okay? So actually, uh, it happened in most of the plan, okay? If you read uh, in the economics parts for the successful of a plan or chemical plan, it depends on the cost, okay? It depends on the cost. The management has to know how to, uh, how to, uh, what? How to manage the cost produced by the utilities. Okay, all right. The second point here is to show you that the lowest steam pressure normally used in the process industry is about uh, 2.7 bar. Okay, the steam is normally distributed at the heater pressure, okay, around 8 bars. Tinggi, yeah? So any reactor with a temperature above 200 degrees Celsius is a potential steam generator. Okay, because you need to provide, okay, you need to provide uh, heat energy for your system, for your unit operation, or for your reactor. So if it generate above 200 degrees Celsius, so look for the operating of your equipment, okay? So if it can generate more than 200 degrees Celsius, it can be a potential steam generator, okay? So when you recycle the energy, it can produce, okay, it has the potential to produce steam, okay, because of the temperature that has been produced for your reactor, okay, all right. Now, then look for the low grade fuels, okay, because once you have done, once you have chosen your, once you have heated, your reactor, okay, or your unit operation, okay. Sometimes you can have a 
extra extra fuel left. Okay, extra fuel left. All right. So that can be called as a waste product from process. All right. And then uh, uh, that might contain certain qualities, certain quantities of material that can be used as a low grade fuels. All right. All right. So that can be used later, meaning that you don't throw away all the fuels, but use the fuels even though the grade is lowered down already because you have used that fuels already. Okay, then use that particular balance of low grade fuels to heat or to uh, to process uh, to direct process heating system for another unit. Okay, you can also use that. All right. So in your report, maybe you would like to introduce the heat exchanger in your uh, your heat exchanger or using low grade fuels that you have been produced. Okay, state in your report. Okay, why and how you uh, you are able to use that particular waste fuel or, or low grade fuels to be reused again for your particular system. Okay, and then the last part, which is the off gases, which is the vent gas from the reactor and recycle stream purges, okay, of high enough calorie, okay, meaning that energy. So when you talk about calorie, it's about energy, okay. So that energy can be used as fuel, all right. So manipulate your um, process flow diagram, okay. And then introduce okay how you can uh, re reuse whatever waste, whatever energy that can be considered as waste to be reused back in the system so that you can conserve all the energy in the system or in the plant. Okay. And then uh, for gas, for example, okay. Preferable sent to the turbine unit to generate ad additional electricity for the plant usage. Okay, so gas. Okay, when we talk about gas, sometimes the gas uh, has a very high temperature. Okay, very high temperature. So you can send back the gas with high temperature with, with a high energy to rotate the turbine. Okay, to rotate the turbine. So this turbine is purposely to generate electricity. Okay, it's like having dynamo. It needs something to turn the the motor. Okay, when you have a dynamo, it's not dynamo. Uh, your uh, the soap that you use to wash your clothes. Okay, so a dynamo. Okay, uh, where energy is generated. When the motor is what? When the motor is moving and cutting the what? Cutting the uh, magnetic flux. Okay, cutting the magnetic field. All right. So when the magnetic field is disturbed, uh, electricity is produced. Uh, okay. So I think that you have learned this in your. Uh, when you are in a primary school or secondary school, okay, how the dynamo works. Okay, so same thing with the turbine. Turbine is a bigger unit. Okay, turbine is the bigger unit to generate electricity. Why can you uh, make sure that you can uh, recover this energy? Okay, because this energy, all right, are able. Okay, are able. Okay to be used in turbine. So maybe you can produce your own turbine in your plant just to have uh, electricity generated okay, for your plant. All right. Maybe this electricity that you generated using the gas that you produce okay, can uh, supply the electricity for your particular management uh, office. Okay. For the internal use, actually. Uh, so we are talking about internal use in the plant. It doesn't mean that that particular electrical energy produced just for the process. Okay. 
All right, so you can use it for the for your plan. OK, so get some idea how you can manipulate this information in your report. OK, and then liquid. OK, liquid, which is essentially incompressible, less energy is stored in a compressed liquid than a gas. So this is another part of how you can conserve the energy. OK, so look for the at least one or three information where you can uh, put under suggestion for your plant. OK, so this is how the turbines looks like. Okay. It's a very big one. OK, so maybe you're not going to work here because people who work here is normally uh, the mechanical engineers, the electrical engineers. OK, so yours is for the process. OK. Right. So the second part is about sizing energy equipment. Okay, sizing. Eh? So sizing, when we talk about sizing, actually we are talking about to the increment of your process. Okay, the increment or your reduction of your process, whether you want to increase 125% other than 100%, or you want to reduce it for 75%. OK, so you look for this, what we call sizing energy equipment. OK, so you can use one equipment or two equipment arranged in parallel, arranged in series. OK, it based on what you want for your plant. OK, so in this case, the transfer of heat to and from the process fluid is an essential part of most chemical process. So bear in your mind, okay, this is a statement when you talk about transfer of heat, whether to the process or from the process, is the most important part in chemical process, okay? So the common uh, use equipment in this particular chemical process plant is normally they use heat transfer equipment, okay, maybe made from the shelf structure or tube heat exchanger structure. Okay, so you can choose any of the equipment involved. Okay, all right. So if you were to design, okay, if you were to design the heat exchanger, then you need to design everything regarding to the dimension of your shell or the tube of the heat exchanger. Okay. If one heat exchanger is not enough for your production, you need to use more than one, okay? So this is how it works, okay? So in the plant design, okay, if you were to do the costing on your heat exchanger system, all right, you just recognize how many heat exchanger that you need, then you multiply with that number, okay? So that should be included in your costing part. OK, in the last chapter. OK, so this one you have learned already. OK, about your heat transfer. I'm not going to explain this because you have learned this in one semester. I'm not going to explain this in one hour. OK, so look at it very well. If you were to design, what does it need to have? Uh, what are the parameters involved for you to do the design of the heat transfer equipment? OK, same thing here. OK, you can refer back to what you have. OK. So this is uh, steps for sizing procedure. OK, so you need to define the duty. Duty means the power. Lah. OK, you need to know the heat transfer rate, the fluid flow rates and the temperature. OK, recognize that first in your system. OK, and then collect all the physical properties required that's involved density, viscosity or thermal conductivity. OK. Decide on the type of exchanger to be used, whether it is plate heat exchanger or shell tube ex heat exchanger. OK. And then select a try value for overall coefficient. So these are the steps involved. OK. 
and then calculate the mean temperature difference, meaning that you need to know the differences between one, uh, one uh, the, the highest temperature and the lower temperature, or the cooler and the heater part of your heat exchanger. And then calculate the area because area main uh, area will be your major uh, major parameter to determine the heat transfer. Okay, the heat transfer value that you have. Okay, so then you decide the exchange layout, individual coefficient, and then calculate overall coefficient and compare with the trial value. Okay. And then calculate the uh, the pressure drops. Okay, so this is what. Okay, so may I know uh, how many of you have to design a heat exchanger system for your plant using S Plan Plus? Is there any of you? Because actually you are uh, required to have uh, only uh, separation unit operation. Okay, separation unit operation. Okay, and then you optimize the design. So you have to do so many trial value. Okay, in order for you to get uh, the final or the cheapest exchanger that will satisfy the duty. Meaning that if you put one, you put uh, in the system, what happened? If you just put two, what happened to the system? So you can calculate the amount of energy. Okay, so don't worry so much about this. If you can't do this, it's okay. But this is the information that you need to know. Okay. All right. Okay. Any question before I proceed? No, Miss. No, eh? Because uh, this is only a supplement to your report. Okay, supplement to your report. If you can include your uh, energy balance in your calculation, that will be extra marks lah, that you get. Okay, because if you were to apply, um, if you were to calculate your costing later, it will reflect back to the heat exchanger system that you use. Okay, all right. So this is the utility requirement. Okay. So you should understand this. All right. So when you talk about utilities, we are not talking about only steam and electricity. Okay. So if you have been in the uh, lab before, at the center of the lab is your biodiesel pilot plant. Okay. At the center of the your uh, lab, you have a biodiesel pilot plant. Okay, so they are using that particular plant, you steam, okay, you steam to reheat the, to heat the water, okay, to heat the reactor, okay, in the reaction process, okay, and the steam is used, steam is uh, generated at the boiler room. Okay, steam is generated at the boiler room. Okay, so the same uh, steam is used to heat the water so that can you can have hot water to clean your fatty acid methyl ester. And at the same time, you can use, uh, use, you use electricity to generate, okay, to generate majority of the equipment uh, to make sure that your equipment can run okay so these are the things that you have to think about okay where can you get this electricity because you generate uh, heat energy you produce the steam the steam will be circulate in the system in the plant to reheat okay to reheat the stream or the cold, cooler stream, okay, so that you can get a higher temperature for the materials that you are concentrated, concentrated it in, okay, All right? And then at the same time, okay, you can see that uh, utilities also involve air and nitrogen supply, okay? Air, for example, you need to use air 
to um, in the uh, system, okay, to control. Okay, air can be con can can used to be what 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 can you use it? Eh? Compressed air can be used to control the valve, okay, in your system. Okay, compressed air can be used to uh, operate certain equipment for your plant. All right, so air also called utilities. All right. And then nitrogen also involved here because it can cooling uh, its function to cool down something. Okay, that is nitrogen. All right. Okay, so please, eh? we are not talking about utilities. You just look at the electricity and water. No, it's not just electricity and water. Even though you are producing steam, okay, the water that you use, okay, so that the water becomes steam must be a good quality of water. Okay. Because if you were to have a good quality of water, then you can protect. Okay. You can protect the stream, the piping, and also sometimes your uh, turbine. Okay. Because we don't want uh, the quality of water normally you're looking for is not really acidic, not really uh, alkaline, okay, because it will affect the piping system, okay. So if you were to work in uh, Tenaga National, Berhad, if you have the chance to work at Tenaga National, Berhad, so these are the information that you learn, okay. You talk about heat energy, Tenaga National are dealing with energy ah, okay so you can apply your internship in tenaga national all right plan all right so we have that in parker at the satu and will apply the job over there they 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 take some students from uh, chemical engineering too okay where you have to make a laboratory uh, analysis okay you your job is to make analysis on the fluid okay, that they use for the equipment to generate electricity. Okay, so jangan nampak you punya internship tu hanya untuk nampak macam electrical engineer, uh, nampak macam chemical engineering sahaja. Okay, but you are the supports actually. Eh? Your area will can be a support to another area. Okay. So you can also try to work for uh, in TNB lah, okay? Alright, so definitely lah you are not dealing with current semua tu, kan? So you will be in that particular lab to do the analysis of the fluids involved, okay? Uh, right? Okay. And then the second point here, the quantities required can be obtained from the energy balance and the material flow sheet. So if you can take the values that you have, okay, and look at the energy balance that you produce, okay, you can see that whether the energy is lost somewhere or outside there, or you can conserve the energy within or within the plant, okay? Okay, so this is a, uh, what, hold on eh. Oops. Okay, so manpower, okay. So manpower is also energy, yeah? Ah, okay, manpower, meaning that people who work, all right? So the people directly involved with the running of the process in the plant, the manpower, the technician, the staff, okay, who are dealing directly or indirectly to the production, okay, to the process, okay? They are also called manpower. They are the energy for the uh, plant. All right. So this includes the day and shift personnel. Okay, because you need to pay them. It's incurred. Eh? The cost is incurred. All right. Because you need people to involve. Okay, you need people to do the maintenance. You need people to control. All right. So that people are also called energy required 
all right, energy required for the plant. So it's involved costing, it's involved cost in your uh, production, all right. And then it should be remembered that to operate three shifts per day, at least four shifts crews will be needed, okay, in this, meaning that there's always somebody to stand by in the plant. Okay, you cannot leave the plant alone. Okay, biarkan di jalan seorang-seorang macam tu, no. Okay, so even though it is a modern, it use a advanced technology, okay, but still, all right, you need people, okay, you need people to uh, have, uh, to, to make sure that the equipment runs smoothly. Okay, so there are procedures actually. When you change the shift, okay, the, the workers who just finished the shift got to inform the, the, the workers who's going to be uh, starting the shift, okay? That is the communication part, right? So you cannot just, okay, I finished my shift, I want to go back. No, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work that way in the engineering um, business, okay? Right, so every time you leave the work, you have to make sure that you transfer all the information to the next people who are going to uh, substitute you in the workplace. Okay, so that is how it works. That's why communication is very important. Okay, you need to talk to each other, okay, to inform each other, to discuss with each other, all right, and make sure the communication can be delivered, all right? Can be delivered, meaning that if you say something, that person must understand what you're trying to say, all right? So you tak boleh kata, oh, I dah cakap tadi, you yang tak faham, kenapa? You have to make sure that the person who going to hold the responsibility after your shift understand what's going on, because that will be the moment where you make sure that, uh, the plant is safe, okay? The plant is safe, right? Okay. So these are the factors affecting manpower planning, okay? Look for the working hours, whether your plant works 24 hours, whether your plant works eight hours, I think majority of the plant works 24 hours. Okay, majority of the plant works 24 hours, okay? So that's why if you uh, heard about a company, okay, a company who supply, uh, you can buka lah syarikat ni, okay. So I give you some example here. When we talk about manpower, okay, you need to plan very well, all right. Like uh, top glove, like uh, servo dynamics, okay. Uh, like Atta Ames, okay, the big company in Malaysia, okay, they are the big company in Malaysia. If you talk about uh, top glove, you talk about the main products that they produce is the rubber glove and so on, lah, guys. Okay, and what happened to this uh, company? All right, what happened to this company? Uh, they have been uh, US, uh, US has boycotting this particular company, okay, and also UK. They boycott the company because they accuse that they have the reports that this company uh, let the workers work more than 12 hours a day. Ah, work more than 12 hours a day, right? So that is actually violating the regulation, okay? Even though uh, the workers don't mind to work overtime, to work more than 12 hours a day, they don't mind because they get extra money. They get uh, overtime working more hours. But the regulation doesn't give them that particular freedom, okay? Just because of that reports, okay? Uh, the company from US, from UK, stop buying the product from that particular company. Okay, stop buying. They are the majority, 
they are the what call uh, customer, the big customer lah. Okay, for that particular company. Bila dia stop the stop buying from uh, Harta Lega, from Top Glove, from Serba Dynamics. Okay, so what happened is that uh, the production of the company goes down. Okay, goes down. They cannot uh, operate. Okay, they cannot produce more product. At the same time, they cannot uh, sell the product to US or UK. All right. So what happens is that the profit of the company will be lowered down. Okay, lowered down. Okay. All right. So this is how it effect lah. If you don't know how to plan the manpower for your company. Okay, so working hours, number of shifts, nature of production, performance rate, hours loss must be taken into consideration. All right, so how many people that you want to, um, to hire? Okay, for your uh, plan. Okay, how many technicians that you want to hire for your plan? How many engineers you want to hire for your plan? So you have to include that when you want to do the costing or economics analysis your, for your plan. So you have to make sure that you have some ideas, how many workers that you need, because you should know how long or the operating hours for your process. Okay. All right. So if you build a small company, small plan, maybe you just need about the working or the processing hours can be eight hours, okay, can be 12 hours only, okay, after that you shut down and then the next day you on again, all right, so it depends on the process. So think about when you talk about your products, or let's say you're talking about 100, 1000 kilo moles per hour, that hour per hour represent the how many hours that you're talking about in your uh, daily production? Okay, all right. So if you were to say 1,000 kilo more per day, so that one day represent how many hours? Is it 24 hours or is it eight hours? Is it six hours? Okay, so you have to decide. Okay, the working hours, the number of shifts and the nature of production. So when you talk about nature of production, you have to look on the uh, products that you would like to produce, whether you have to continuously produce the product or you have time or lag, lag time, okay, before you can produce the next batch, okay. If you need to go uh, continuously, then you work 24 hours, okay. Definitely, the workers must be work in shift, lah. Okay, and then performance rate, it depends on the uh, production that you have, okay, because when you talk about manpower planning, okay, if people are willing to work more than 12 hours, but when you look at the performance, they are very tired already, okay, even though they can work, but they cannot perform very well compared to people who uh, who has uh, uh, enough rest, uh, something like that, okay? And then at the same time, you need to know uh, hours loss in the production, hours loss, okay? You're using the manpower, okay? How long the person can work in a day? How long uh, you give them time for break, okay? So look at that, okay? Because all these things involve money, okay, involve money. Even though you can pay extra money for overtime, but if the performance is not good, then better not lah, okay. Better to have a new shift where people are fresh enough to work, to begin the work, okay. So this is how you manipulate, uh, how you can think about uh, reducing the cost, Okay, 
by managing the manpower that you have. But do not overuse your manpower. <laughs> yeah, kalau you overuse your manpower, uh, something bad will happen lah. Okay, if not happen today, it might happen in the next two years, three years, like what happened now to top glove, harta lega, okay, the glove industry, okay, and server dynamics, okay. So, you look, uh, try to think about that, okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So, so this is the first part, right? Of the energy and utility balances, okay? And also the manpower needs for your company. So you have to look for the conservation of energy. Remember, try to conserve the energy. Make sure that no energy loss to the surrounding, okay? So you use all the energy that you produce when you use the energy, you produce the energy, conserve it in the system. Okay? And then when you talk about sizing energy equipment, look whether you need a big uh, size or you increase the number of energy equipment needed for your particular process or not. Okay? So if you need more than one, then use more than one. But look again whether you require the sizing equipment, the, the bigger size of the equipment, or you just require a small size. Okay. All right. Think about whether you are required, whether you think that it is good to have cooler only, or is it uh, good to have to put at that position? You can put here exchanger so that you can. Uh, Recycle back the energy, okay? Make full use of the energy that you have in your system, okay? So that's why when you learn about this topic, you can uh, update again your PFD, okay? Update your PFD and apply the uh, heat exchanger. Uh, where you think that it can give you, it can reduce the cost of the production, okay? And then the last part is the utility. Remember, utility is not just steam and electricity. Utilities can come from uh, air. Utilities can come from the nitrogen. Utilities can also come from uh, and normally four of them only okay air water where you produce steam okay nitrogen as a cooling system okay lagi apa tadi dah tak ingat dah okay ah you refer back <laughs> and then the last part for this uh, uh this lecture is about the manpower which is the workers involved okay so for one ship do you need one engineer to in charge do you need a technician to in charge? Okay, so play around with that. Okay, so for your plan, you have to think about, okay, overall manpower that you need. Okay, how many engineers do you need? Okay, and what background of engineers that you need? Okay, so plug a number. Let's say you need only three of them. Okay, because your company is very big, you need three engineers so that they can work based on shift. Uh, okay, so at the same time, how many technicians do you need? Okay, technician is uh, what required lah because the technician will do all the maintenance part. Okay, so how many technicians do you need? So calculate, put some number. Because you need to know the salary of your technician, the salary for your engineers, okay? To make, to calculate the uh, account later, okay? And then uh, the staff, okay? The staff, eh? Kerja-kerja rencah, rencai ke? Rencai ke rencah? Kerja-kerja kat bawah tu. Okay, how many of them do you need? Okay, clerk, do you need clerk? 
unit accountant. Okay, so put there. Okay, give some uh, numbers. Okay, so that you can calculate at least. All right, because you don't have any experience yet, but at least angan-angan uh, lah. Uh, so how many workers you nak ada? Tu semua you need to include. Eh, In, you need to include. All right, even though you look this as a um, but energy part, okay, energy, electrical energy, fuel energy, and then the equipment that's involved energy, the utilities that involve energy, the manpower, or the workers also involve energy. Uh -huh. So you have to think about this and then uh, get some ideas how many of them that you need in your plan per day, okay, All right. And then you're going to do the costing. You you need to include the cost involved later. Okay. All right. So I stop sharing. Okay. Any question? You want to do the mass balance on the. Uh, Energy, you can always refer to your uh, energy not provided to the uh, heat exchanger system. Eh? Kita always refer to heat exchanger, heating, heating system or heater. Okay, so that is how you calculate the energy. So if you were to put heater, how much energy is needed? If you were to put cooler, how, how much energy that you, you absorb in the system? Okay. So you total everything, then you think about, okay, total how much energy do you need in your process per hour, for example, per second, for example. All right. So once you know that, uh, we're going to apply pinch energy, pinch technology. Okay. So this pinch technology will help you to reduce the energy exposed to the environment. So pinch energy will give you the chance to recover back the energy okay, into the system again. Okay, so that one we're going to continue next week. Next week? Next week, Chutika? Next week, Chutika? Next week, Chutika? Next week, Chutika? Cuti ye? Eh? <laughs> Awak tahu ye eh, bila cuti? <laughs> cuti apa next week? Christmas. Christmas? Oh. Uh, Santa Claus is coming. <laughs> okay, so next week cuti. Uh, so this week you boleh bincang-bincang uh, dulu dengan your group members okay about your PFD okay kat mana nak letak kat mana nak letak heat exchanger tu nanti okay hmm. boleh imagine tak saya nak you imagine ya dulu okay because next class kita akan masuk pinch technology okay so that you understand what's going on lagi lah Well, uh, I think uh, this week you just continue dulu dengan you punya material balance for the equipment that you have and then think about your PFD. Uh, maybe you would like to update your PFD for the energy balance, okay, for the energy conservation, okay. So that energy conservation you can apply in your simulation process, okay, simulation process. Because once you have done your simulation, uh, one equipment, each of you deal with one equipment, nanti you can combine everything. Cuba combine. Does it work or not? Okay. Because in the simulation, you can buat satu-satu dulu. Make sure one unit tu can, you can run the simulation. Okay. Student A, your unit can run the simulation. Student B can run the simulation. Then you connect. A and B connect, they akan jadi two units and then you run again the simulation. Okay, you run again the simulation. Okay, 
So you can ada data input sebelum uh, data ataupun input for individual equipment dulu before you cantumkan. Okay. So bila you cantumkan dia akan complex sikit. Jadi you kena kena what's wrong if it doesn't simulate. Okay. So that's why you are given the opportunity 15 minutes to come up with that information. Jadi nanti bila you nak combine the two equipments, maksudnya dua orang student tu, you boleh share satu uh, satu komputer lah. Okay, tu salah buat. Asing-asing aku komputer lain, kau komputer lain tak jadilah bila you nak sambung. So you guna satu komputer dan merge. Merge benda tu. Okay, mergekan benda tu, data tu. Alright. Dan tengok, how does it work. Lepas tu baru mergekan lagi dengan satu lagi. So, dia ada empat orang kan? And empat orang. Kalau boleh merge empat-empat tu, best. <laughs> Kalau boleh merge empat-empat tu, oh, excellent. Alright. Okay. Kalau tak boleh merge, ah, nak buat macam mana? Okay. Tapi you kena usaha lah. You have to identify uh, what's wrong with your simulation. Maybe data tak cukup. Okay. Uh, think about this. If the data is not enough for the input, okay, because each of you will have your different equipment, different types of process, reaction and so on. Okay. Kalau data tu tak cukup, okay, you look for the what the system needs. Okay. If the systems need, for say you are dealing with reactor. Okay. So for the reactor, you learn about reaction. Kan? Part berapa you learn lah? Part 2 eh. You learn about reaction. Okay. So reaction ni uh, ada banyak stage kan? Okay. If you cannot get the information, you don't know where to get the information, browse from the internet, browse for from the journal. Okay, journal. Okay, dia punya keyword adalah your, your reactants. Keyword dia adalah reactants you. Maybe you nak tengok dia, first order, second order, you need to put that information in your aspen. Okay. Uh, dia akan complex sikit lah kalau you choose reactor. That's why uh, I prefer my students to choose only the separated, separation system. Okay. Supaya dia lebih mudah untuk you run the simulation. Okay. Reactor system is just what mass balance. Okay, you work mass balance to make sure that uh, you have a quantity relevant to your reactor. So once you have that product, your job is just to separate the products. Okay, but it depends lah. Kalau you want to try, you can always browse. Okay, because uh, your uh, your lecturer don't know what what's going on for your particular. Uh, uh, equipment that you have chosen, okay, because you are dealing, ramai kan, setiap orang lain proses dia, so, so uh, it's unfair lah kalau you ask your lecturer, ada ada 17 reactions, 17, 17 dia ada dalam kepala dia, tak jadi, okay, so for you, you only have one reaction, for let's say, you ada empat kepala untuk fikir, okay lah tu, uh, fikir lah, alright, so that is uh, the most important part, okay? Or else you can just choose the separator, okay? Separation unit only, okay? All right, but you can discuss with your lecturer, okay? For my students, actually, I prefer them to, to choose a separation unit for the simulation, okay? Meaning that it doesn't mean that uh, you use the same unit, but actually you can apply the same unit, let's say, arrange in parallel. Okay, arrange in parallel, right? So you can have distillation 1A, distillation 1B. Arrange in parallel the product that you have, you're going to combine to distillation number 3. Uh, this, okay, so you have distillation number 1, distillation number 2, arrange in parallel the product from distillation uh, number one and number two ni akan merge supaya dia jadi fit dalam distillation number three. Uh, something like that. You can also do that. 
no problem. That's why I say you can manipulate the PFT. Okay, you can manipulate the PFT. Alright, so jangan bergantung pada the original PFT. Alright, because you are the one who do the, but dealing with the process. Okay. Alright, so any question? Because I'm, I don't have any more thing to say. I don't have any more things to discuss, okay, except you have any questions or else we just uh, terminate the session. Any question? Eh, mendung kan hari ni? Rashid? Miss nak tanya? Yeah. Contoh kalau saya nak buat satu company, hmm. and then saya nak hire engineer. Hmm. So, uh, Level engineer mana yang saya patut hire dulu? Junior ke, intermediate ke, atau senior engineer? Okay. So that is your proposal. But the plan is the, you are planning to build a plan. Not yet. Okay, you don't, you, you don't have to, uh, what? I see. Uh, when you want to build a plan, okay, definitely you need to refer to the project engineer first okay project engineer first so that project engineer must have excellent knowledge on the production nampak tak eh so dia akan bermula dengan excellent uh, knowledge tu dulu okay because dia yang nak nak handle the process okay dia yang tahu what's going on meaning that Bila equipment datang, so this uh, this year is your plan. You do the calculation, semua-semua tu kan. Siapa yang buat calculation tu? Definitely engineers yang buat calculation tu. Technician tak buat. Okay. So calculation tu. Alright. So you punya engineers must have a different backgrounds. Different backgrounds. So this engineer is a process engineer. This engineer is the mechanical engineers. This engineer is the civil engineer. Civil engineer also need. This engineer is the electrical engineers, alright? Because kalau you kata, you need to have uh, maintenance, you need to have uh, electrical part in your plant, definitely you need to hire electrical engineers, okay? But you just need one uh, kepala lah <laughs> to control all the engineers. Ah, dia mesti ada satu yang kita selalu panggil, Project engineers, dia yang top. Project engineers, bawah dia, you can have engineers in in many areas. Okay, many areas. Bawah engineers tu, baru you ada assistant engineers. Okay, alright. Bawah tu baru ada assistant engineers. So, berapa orang engineers you nak hire, depends on your process. Definitely, you need a chemical engineering background. Okay, you need the mechanical engineering background because this is a plan. Apa-apa jadi pada plan, siapa nak repair? Siapa yang tahu apa nak repair? Okay, siapa yang, tah yang tahu apa nak proses? Yang nak tahu yang nak proses tu ada chemical engineers. Siapa yang tahu apa nak repair? Apa nak repair? Bukan dia repair. <laughs> apa nak repair? That can be the mechanical engineers. Alright. Okay, piping-piping tu, uh, dia punya kerja lah. Dia kena tahu. Alright. Okay, dia mesti ada. Siapa yang buat kerja? Assistant engineers. Buat kerja lah. Alright. So, dia akan bagi arahan pada assistant engineer. Okay, kau pergi sana. Tengok part ni. Tengok, look at this PFD. Okay. This PFD, this stream got some problem. You go and check. Okay. So, dia pergi check. Dia pergi check, dia laporkan balik pada engineer. So, engineer akan... Berfikir, because engineer belajar tinggi kan? Alright, so dia boleh fikir. Jadi dia boleh buat decision. So engineers can make decision. Technician cannot make decision. Dia kena dapat instruction. Baru dia buat kerja. Okay, alright. So instruction must come from the top to bottom. Okay, information must come also from top to bottom and bottom to top. Ah, That is called communication. Macam mana? So tak bolehlah kalau semua chemical engineer saja dalam tu. Apa terjadi pada equipment, you tak tahu nak buat apa-apa. 
Jadi tak tahu apa-apa. Ha. Tapi ada juga yang kita panggil outsource. Outsource eh. Maksudnya kita ada agreement dengan engineers tu. Okay. Alright. Kita ada agreement dengan engineers tu di mana dia hanya datang satu jam satu hari saja. Because dia pun ada kerja kat tempat plan lain. So dia macam outsource lah. Macam doktor pakar kan. Dia pergi hospital ni untuk hari Isnin. Dia pergi hospital yang satu lagi untuk hari Selasa. Okay. Jadi ada agreement. Alright. Ada agreement macam tu. Itu kita panggil outsource. Tak semestinya kita hire the expert duduk dekat hospital tu so sahaja. Eh, jadi expert ni dia boleh serve hospital ni, serve hospital sana and so on. So engineer susu like that. Okay. But normally when you talk about designing first, okay design, uh, design of the project, normally it takes one to two years lah. Designing the project only. Okay. You are designing the project. You take one to two hours, uh, one to two years to complete the project. Okay. So, within one to two years, katalah hari ni you baru plan, you dah tahu the equipment offer that you want to use and you know the price. Uh, ni saya masuk balik eh. Okay. So, you know the price of the equipment. So, you dah ada quotation of the price of the equipment, major equipment. Let's say 1.2 million untuk equipment sahaja. Okay. Ataupun 3 million untuk equipment only. Okay. Alright. To start the process. But that price is today. Today's price. Ah, kena faham. Harga tu harga sekarang. Plan dah build belum? Belum. Alright. Belum build lagi. Bila nak build the plan? Okay. Let's say two years later. Baru nak build the plan. Okay. Tapi quotation kena ada sekarang. Quotation of the salary kena ada sekarang. Okay. Therefore. All information that you get today, okay, you kena kira dia punya interest. Harga barang hari ni tak sama dengan harga barang dua tahun akan datang. Duit hari ni tak sama value dia dengan duit dua tahun akan datang. Okay, sama juga kalau you pandang ke belakang. Eh, masa you darjah satu, okay, satu ringgit boleh beli apa? Okay, sekarang ni you dah umur 20 tahun. Okay, dah jadi satu tujuh tahun. Sekarang ni you berumur 20 tahun. Adakah satu ringgit tu sama nilainya dengan masa you dah jadi satu? Ah, fikir benda tu dulu. Alright, so meaning that all the costing, okay, bila you dah tahu berapa orang engineers tu, you kena fikir engineers tu nanti nak work tu, let's say, yang, yang ada tu adalah. Uh, nanti yang akan datang tu, you punya staff-staff yang bawah-bawah tu kan. Untuk beginning ni, you need engineers. Baru nak set up. <laughs> you perlu engineers, top people. Okay. Technician tak perlu because dia tak buat kerja lagi. Tak ada, tak ada equipment. You don't have the equipment yet. <laughs> tak ada equipment. So, tak perlu ambil dia bekerja dulu. <laughs> but, you estimate how many of them uh, that you going to take in the future. Uh, that's your plan. How many? Okay. And then you plan in the future. Okay. In the future. Bila plan dah siap. Okay. Plan tu nak buat operasi. How many hours? Uh, then you buat calculation. Engineers masa tu dah tak perlu ramai-ramai. Okay. Katalah sekarang you perlu semua jenis engineers. Uh, sekarang ni. Tapi by that time maybe you reduce the number of engineers because Maybe tak perlukan sangat. Okay, because that's a settle lah kerja dia. But this is just, senang cerita, just estimation. Buat je lah estimation, tak apa. So that estimation nanti akan bagi tahu you berapa value you punya plan. Berapa nilai you punya plan yang you nak set up ni. Okay, sebab dia melibatkan asset. Okay, kalau ada liability maksudnya hutang. Okay, alright. Capital, maksudnya modal. Uh, berapa modal diperlukan untuk set up your business? Okay, modal ni, capital come from the investor. Uh, saya bagi you knowledge sikit supaya nampak. Yeah. Kita mungkin nak meniaga tapi kita tak ada duit. 
Kita ada idea tapi mungkin kita tak ada duit nak berniaga. Kita ada idea untuk buka plan tapi kita tak ada duit. So we need people untuk invest. Okay, kita jual ideas. Ha, tu yang berlaku sekarang. Okay, kita jual ideas. Nak jual ideas tu kena lengkap lah. Because investor dia nak tahu. Eh, adakah your business ni will give them profit or not? Ah, dia macam tu. You tak boleh menyaga-menyaga ikut suka je. Okay, investor ni dia mesti nak tahu. That's why bila dia nak tahu, you nak jual you punya design ni. Okay, to the investor. Investor ni can be the jerung-jerung kat luar sana lah. Maksudnya yang banyak-banyak duit tu. Okay, it can it can be uh, institution, it can be from government, it can be from individual. Uh, dia macam tu. Okay. So, bila you nak buka di tender tu, you akan cakap, okay, ni, this is your production, this is the cost, this is the value of this uh, plant. Okay, how many workers, semua dah ada data-data-data-data tu. Itulah, the moment you submit your assignment, minggu 14 nanti. <laughs> so, saya akan bertindak sebagai investor. Saya akan tengok your plan ni, worth it ke tak worth it? Uh, untuk saya invest. Okay. Jadi kalau you ada planning for your plan very well, you introduce your plan very well, you know your production, you know your raw materials, you know how much profit that you're going to generate. So investor akan lebih gembira lah untuk invest. Uh, dia macam tu. Okay. Jadi for your case, senang je cerita. You just estimate. Okay. Estimate. And then justify lah kenapa you need this engineer, this engineer, this engineer. Technician kenapa berapa banyak. Okay. Tengok production. Kita tak nak technician tu duduk melanggok eh. Bukan hari-hari pelan tu rosak. Kan? Uh. Okay. Pakai Rashid. Pakai okay, Miss. Hmm. Lain ada soalan? Any question? Ideas eh, so you should be able, saya, I, I just want to train you because you are going to your internship. Bila you, know, you go for the internship, you must be able to communicate with your superior. You gonna communicate. Communicate doesn't mean that dia cakap, uh, you dengar saja. No. Communicate means dia cakap, okay, you contribute balik. Dia cakap, you contribute balik. You jangan takut untuk bercakap. Yeah. So they will evaluate you based on your communication skills. Alright. Tak tahu tanya. Okay. Tak tahu tanya. Biasalah. Superior ni nak marah-marah biasa. Okay. Tapi that is how how it works actually. Kalau tak marah you tak ingat. Uh, something like that. <laughs> And you need memang garang-garang. <laughs> Especially mechanical engineers. Ha, at least proses ni kita bertapi-tapi sikit kan ke engineering ni because kita tunggu reaction tu lambat ha, ada katalis baru kita zoom <laughs> ok alright so I think uh, that's all kalau if you don't have any questions thank you very much for coming to the class alright so all the best and uh, make sure you spend your holiday wisely ok for this uh, this week Okay, so saya tak bagi holiday lagi untuk you. Kita akan jumpa esok untuk one hour. Okay, saya akan finish for this particular chapter first. Okay, under uh, pinch technology which is a very important topics untuk you faham. Okay, because this topics will be included in your uh, test nanti. Okay, alright. So I think that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Miss. 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 Thank you, Miss.